Today we're going to talk about some of the different ways to create a web page. And we're going to talk about what I consider to be entry level ways to create a web page. And we're going to talk about professional ways to create a web page. And Dreamweaver we're going to get back to. Um, I think the most <coughs> user friendly free website builder, builder out there is Wix. Has anybody in here ever used this? If you've taken my web fundamentals class you have. Pretty easy, right? You can hit start now. You can customize their HTML5 compliant. They're usually pretty well designed. The only downside to me of using a template is, well, you might look like somebody else's stuff that's out there. It's sort of like buying clothes off the rack. Most of us do it. It's fine for most of us. We don't usually all have our own tailors, right? For the average person or small business who just wants to get a brochure site on the web, this is the cheapest and easiest way to get up there fast. I do believe it belongs as a mention. There are other sites similar to this. It's a good place to start. You may not use this in our class. I do that in other classes, but this class, I just want you to know this to me is entry level first steps. Great way to get started. We cover it in web, we cover it in web fundamentals and internet technologies. Now we're going to start, after that we're going to get into professional ways for creating websites. WordPress. Now I don't use the WordPress site. But I do have lessons out there if you want to use it on actually creating your own WordPress site on your own domain where you're self-hosting it. Because we have our own domain where you can do it. And if you take internet technologies or web fundamentals, I teach you the basics of it. WordPress is very, very popular. I want you guys to later go to a job hunting site like Monster. Actually, let's do that. I'm going to take you to Monster. There are other ones out there. I hear Craigslist is big these days for job hunting. I like Monster. Let's try it as a single word. sure why this is dimmed out, but okay. You can see, I don't really want a job, thank you. Um, you can see that this comes up with a few other things. WordPress is actually a job skill that a lot of, um, if you people who are looking to hire web designers often want them to set up a WordPress theme and customize it because then it's very easy for them to go in and maintain it. So that's sort of an intermediary. You can, buy, you, can get, you can either buy or find some free WordPress templates that are very good, very professional looking. It's a great way to get started. Many design companies will modify them for you professionally. What skills do you think you need to know to modify a WordPress template? What skills do you need to know to create a web page? HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP. Same thing for modifying this because that's what it, the platform it runs on. And so you can see there's various things up here, ASP.NET, C-Sharp, PHP. WordPress goes along with those skills because usually you have somebody tweaking it under the hood. Not my favorite. Now the reason that WordPress is not my favorite is because WordPress actually started as a blogging system. And you guys have heard of web blogs and people would just write posts, enter it. And it organizes things nicely. And as a blogging system, it's probably top notch and the best. It's not my favorite content management system. I did some research before I learned one because I don't have time to learn them all. There's hundreds. I picked Drupal. I picked Drupal because it was recommended for programmers who wanted to be able to get in and modify things. So that's why I'm there. The other reason I picked Drupal is because I have a lot of friends in the industry and I said, should I do my website in WordPress? And they're like, eh, it doesn't have the best security. It's not as fully featured. And there were some good reasons not to use WordPress for me. Upon doing a lot of research, I realized that most of my students can't tell the difference at the, at the surface. What's the difference between WordPress and Drupal? And so I tried to think about what's the best analogy that I can give you. Now you're all hopefully locally around here. Has that, how many of you have ever been to Rockford? Oh, not everybody. How many of you have ever been to Crystal Lake? Hopefully everybody. How do you feel about driving down Route 14 at 4 p.m.? It's not a good experience, is it? 
Rockford, and I lived there for a while because I went to Rockford College, is a nice city to drive in. Four lane roads, dividers, turn signals, well marked, laid out on a grid system. Traffic flows. To me, the difference between WordPress and Drupal is the difference between Crystal Lake and Rockford. I want you to think about this. Rockford to me is a town whose road work was planned where they expected growth in traffic. Can you follow that concept? And if you plan to have a lot of traffic and set it up to have a lot of traffic, how does traffic move? Smoothly, right? So they planned it to be what it was from the start. Drupal was planned to be a content management system. Crystal Lake, wonderful town, I love it. it w when I was growing up, it was a wonderful small town. They never planned to be the big town that they are now. They never planned for the population, they never planned for the traffic. They sort of grew organically instead of having a structured plan to grow. Can you guys see how that's happened? They're sort of having to make things work. I see WordPress as being like that because WordPress was a blog that is adding functionality and adding functionality and adding functionality. Has anybody ever taken a firefighting course? Construction? We'll see if you guys can follow the logic. If you build a house and then you cut out part of the house to add an addition to it, is it as structurally strong as a house that was, be, was meant to be um, large from the beginning? Can you see now where I'm going? WordPress has had functionality <coughs> added to the core. Drupal was planned on being big from the beginning. And that's really inherent difference between the two. Now, many people will tell you that WordPress is significantly easier to use. I'm a programmer, I can't really tell. I just, I can't. It's, it's, if, you, if you've been programming long enough, it's just, it's software. So you're gonna have to decide for yourself what you like for interface and layout. But most of it, they have a lot of the same themes, they have a lot of the same features. I won't tell you which to use, they're both free, they're both well supported, they're both popular. WordPress is more popular. I would honestly learn both. And we do have a content management systems class that's under development that will teach you WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal. Those are the three big ones. So WordPress is, it's right on that hinge. You can do professional websites in it, do it well, and they work really well, and you can do a lot of stuff, or it can be a beginning entry level one. It can go either way. Okay, now I'm gonna show you Drupal. I'm gonna turn off the lights for a second. Hopefully this will let you see the screen. We'll see. Does that come through okay? Yeah, okay. I'll do that. Okay, so I want to show you, I think I'm actually pretty zoomed in on this one. Yeah, that's good. And the nice thing about this is this is sort of a responsive design. I want you to watch something. See how it changes into columns? When I get narrower, it just reflows. Responsive design, it that's the way it looks on a phone. Now I'm, and the cool thing here, it knows me, obviously it's mine. Um, cool thing about this, I'm logged in, I don't code on my desktop and upload it. With Dreamweaver, you code, you upload, you change, you code, you do. It's a drag. Drupal for me has been the perfect solution for me because I want to not matter what computer I'm on, I don't want to have any files saved on my computer, I can make changes to this from my phone. I like that responsiveness. I do back it up, it backs up automatically every day, and I do manual backups. But when I want to add content, let me show you how easy it is. Just stick to the screen for a minute. So I'm going to look for myself, because you do come to college to find yourself. And here's my YouTube channel. And here's your first lecture for next week. And I'm going to choose share, and I'm going to choose embed, and I'm going to copy, and I'm going to go back to maryhelp.net. And then I'm going to go to web design, and I'm going to add a child page. It's going to think. And I'm going to call it the evolution of layout. 
how web layout has changed in <coughs> from 1997 to now. I'm going to type it when people aren't watching me. Something interesting to show you, this is the body. It says full HTML. If I were to preview this right now, it looks fine with no tags, but I can go in and I can edit it. And let's say this is where I usually start. Let's just make this a heading tag. And I've done some special CSS formatting to. And we'll go ahead and go into my book outline, web design, weight. And I want that about there. OK, I've created a new page. And I'm going to add a child page to this. 